feet upon the sea till I'm dancing in the temple of peace be still you are here so it is well even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks peace stability inside of the storm when the world is in chaos and it's uncertain when we're surrounded by sickness or financial struggle or job change or job loss or infertility or friends and family who don't know you God, when we're hurting deep in our soul, you are the peace that passes all understanding. You're the only source of true joy in this world. I ask you would just cover this room, just rain down and pour down peace and love, that you would wrap us in your arms that we would see you as the loving Abba Father that you say you are. God, that you would speak to our hearts and remind us that you see us. That our storm is not invisible to you. That you have us in your unmoving hand. I ask today that you would give us hearts that are soft to be penetrated and ears that are open to listen that you would remove all distractions and all worry and all fear and that we would be able to hear you speak clearly to our hearts and it's in Jesus name that I pray all this amen guys before John comes to speak I uh, wanted to share just a little something that's kind of been on my heart, and it, I didn't really plan for that, but it just kind of goes in line with everything, this set list, everything we've, we've sung about today. Um, in, in life, you know, we're going to go through things. There's going to be things that come at us, and things that we don't understand, things that seem like, why would this happen to us? You know, why is God allowing this to happen? Um, when you're a Christian, when you become a Christian, I hate to tell you, but life's not going to be perfect. I, it's, can anybody agree to that? Life's not perfect, right? Amen. In some cases, it may get harder just because the enemy, you know, when, whenever we become a Christian, the enemy sees that and we're a threat to him, whereas before we were not. Um, and, and one of the, the verses that's been playing over in my head lately is uh, in John chapter 16, when Jesus, it's before he, he gets arrested, it's before he's crucified, and he's explaining, you know, to the disciples what's about to happen. And he goes on to tell them that, you know, in this world, you know, they're going to have sorrow. There's going to be days that um, they are just completely lost. They're, they don't know what they're going to do. And the world is going to laugh in their face at everything they've lost, at all their sadness and all of their hurt and pain. But he goes on to say, you know, you will see me again. And in that day, your sorrow will be turned to joy. You know, and in this, this is why we can have peace is because in, in this chapter at the end, Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. He wants us to know that we're going to go through things. We are going to be tested. We are going to be tried. There's going to be things come at us that we can't handle on our own. But he goes on to say, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus has already overcome it. We just have to trust him. And in him, we have this peace and this hope and this joy that is rooted in who he is. And nothing that we have and nothing that we are and anything that we can do, but it's rooted in who Jesus is and everything he's already done for us. Hey, can I get some more? 
I need more. I need more. Just throw me up there. Hello. More. I need more. I need more. One more, one more. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. okay. Wow, why are we feeding back? It's weird. How are you guys doing this morning? You need to bring me another mic? Or is it? Okay, there we go. That's, that's a little better. It's usually not this quiet. I can't be this quiet. I can't be this contained. Everybody doing good this morning? Oh, do you want to see me dance again like I did last week? No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> Woo! All right, this morning we're going to talk about something pretty awesome. Um, never fall. You may be thinking to yourself, how is this even possible? How could he even do that? Um, Robert is talking about this week, or the past couple of weeks, he's been talking about freedom. And this is kind of in that same sort of thread. Last week we talked about joy. The week before that we talked about encouragement. We've been trying, I've been, I've been, um, impressed by the Lord to speak words of affirmation, to speak words of encouragement, to lift us up, to give us some hope, because these are some of the, some, sometimes these can be dark days, not just because the weather's horrible, but because there's like sickness. How many of you have gone through some, some sort of sickness, or your relatives have gone through some sort of sickness in like the past week, two weeks, three weeks, okay. How many of you have had the stomach bug? <laughs> Front row, where nobody is. <laughs> Um, yeah, sometimes we, we get down and things are difficult, right? And in this season, I want to offer us some hope. This, this morning, we're going to talk about how do we never fall? So why, why do we fall? What are some reasons why we fall? What are some reasons why we give in? What are some things that we, that we do when we choose to give up good things and receive bad things? That sounds really dumb, doesn't it? Why would you do that, you know? Like, you've got a billion dollars, but you're going to give it away so you could grab a quarter on the ground. That makes sense, right? But don't you realize that, in, I know that's a really, really far-fetched example in our minds, but that's not very far-fetched to what's actually happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. <laughs> Lust, sinful desire, our fallen human nature, right? Right? Our corruption. There's something in us that's really messed up for us to be able, for us to, to have everything and not be satisfied. That's weird and horrible. How David, who had as many wives as he could count, as many people to be with as he wanted to, took somebody else's wife. That's just wrong, right? And he didn't even realize it until he was confronted with it. That's how addicted David was. You think that his wife, like, we, th we look in the Old Testament, well, God, you know, God was like, you know, kind of lax about polygamy. He was okay with, you know, having multiple wives and stuff. Look at all the kings. They had like 300 wives and however many concubines. They didn't, you know, God didn't care about that. That was fine, right? Uh-huh, yeah, that was fine. Because look at what happened. You don't think... Like David was addicted to, we have children in here. You know what I'm talking about? You don't think he was addicted to it? You, you think that that was any different than the stuff that we struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis? You think that is any different? He was struggling with the same cycles, how he could not even realize that he was stuck. Why do we fall? Why do we choose to give up good things and receive bad things? Why do we give up our freedom? How do we trade success for failure? Genesis chapter 25. I'm going to read you this happy little story. My northern sarcasm is kicking in. <laughs> Genesis chapter 25. A story of Jacob and Esau. And in this story, Esau is really dumb. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was exhausted. Oh, I am so exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore, his name was called Edom, which means red. I guess he liked red stuff. 
Jacob said, sell me your birthright right now. He's like, I'm no dummy. This guy is a dummy. I'm no dummy. Sell me your birthright right now. Esau says, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me now. This is like some kind of a dark villain. Like, swear to me now. Give me your birthright. <laughs> Give me, let's do this pact. You know, that's a horrible thing. Okay, so he swore to him, sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. And he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Jacob's like, this idiot's going to give me everything for a bowl of soup. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> he deserved to have it taken away. You hear that, dumb? I'm sorry, but that is me, isn't it? Isn't that you? We give up so, like, for a bowl of stew, for like, you know, I'm, oh, I'm famished, I'm dying. His hunger was so great, he was so famished. He lost all sense of reason. He lost, he was crazy. He did stupid things. Amen. God says this to, to Cain right before he's about to kill Abel. He says to him, Sin desires to have you. Sin desires to have you, but you must master it. Because in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19, Peter reminds us, whatever masters us, to that we are enslaved. Whatever masters us, to that we are enslaved. And how many of us are mastered by something this morning? How many of us are mastered by something this morning? You're not in control of yourself. You're being controlled by something else. We try to compensate for our deficiencies by pursuing momentary pleasure instead of waiting with joy. Do you know what waiting with joy is? That's called patience. Waiting with joy. Instead of that, instead of the patience, we pursue momentary pleasures because we're trying to compensate for something. We were never loved enough as a kid, so we search for love in all the wrong places. Right? Right? deficiency in my heart and I pursue other things I was poor and had nothing as a kid and so I pursue wealth and greed and try to snatch as much as I possibly can of money and I'm afraid I'm going to lose it so I hoard it and I keep it and I stuff it and I make sure that nobody knows how much I have and I, I keep everything secret and I hold it all in we have coping mechanisms addictions we're brought into bondage, led to the prison where we'll die. And believe me, in this flesh, this is going to die. This is destined for death, all of it. I was really happy, John. <laughs> Thanks for that positive message this morning. <laughs> well, the message title is what? Never fall, right? Well, we just figured that out. We're <laughs> we just figured out how we do, right? How are we going to get to this? This seems so far away, doesn't it? It seems like it's on the other side of eternity. I want to read from 2 Peter chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn there with me and follow along because we're going to read most of this chapter this morning. And I encourage you to bring your Bibles to Incurrent. Sometimes we get lazy. We're going to learn about that this morning, too. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, wait a minute. Peter, his faith, the guy whose shadow made people healed, what did he just tell you? To those who have obtained a faith of what? Equal standing with ours. 
because of their own righteousness. Wait a minute. No, no, no. By the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see? Like what Tanner said this morning, is nothing that we do. The righteousness of Christ has granted to us a faith of equal value. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How many things? All things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. This is one of those passages of Scripture, by the way, that like, you know, you could preach ten sermons from, so I'm really going to condense this today, okay? But I want you to read this carefully. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence, by which He has granted to us His precious and very great promises, so that 